Michigan was the first state in the Midwest to legalize recreational marijuana back in 2018. Sales began a year later in December of 2019. Well, for the city of Detroit, the path to recreational sales took a bit longer. The first proposed ordinance was struck down by a federal judge for being likely unconstitutional. It wasn't until 2022 that the city's second ordinance was passed and the same judge said it was fine. The first recreational sales in Detroit were made in January of this year. Here to discuss all things recreational cannabis are Detroit City Council President Pro Tem James Tate and health care and cannabis reporter for Cranes Detroit Business Dustin Walsh. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you. So Councilman, we'll start with you. How are you feeling about where we are right now with this and the impact that it's having on the community? Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling good. You know, uh, it was a, a long battle. <laughs> Um, but when we look at the results of it, uh, I'm very pleased at where we are today in terms of the numbers. So we have currently 36 licenses for adult use retail. Those are what people traditionally call dispensaries in the city of Detroit. Those are the ones that are most competitive. Uh, and of those 36 licenses, uh, 51, oh, excuse me, uh, 20 of those uh, have Detroiters who own 51% of the ownership of those establishments. Of those 20, 17 are African American. So when we look at half of the industry being actual bona fide Detroiters and then seven, uh, the great majority of them being African Americans, that completely, um, it, it goes against what we're seeing around the country where you see two to three percent African American ownership. So I'm very pleased to seeing the demographic of the city being reflected in this industry, which was a big fear for residents in the city, um, and being able to um, start to see some movement now in, in areas that we didn't see before. So that's encouraging news, sort of the beginning of a new chapter in Detroit. Uh, but Dustin, outside of Detroit, this has been going on for a few years now, and we're starting to see some trends in the industry. How would you say the industry is doing right now overall? I think they're fearful. Um, prices are very, very low um, because of oversupply, and a lot of it has to do with the major city didn't have uh, recreational cannabis for so long. Um, there's a lack of dispensaries. There's probably not enough dispensaries to move the product that they're growing. Hmm. Um, so prices are very low, and we're sort of seeing that shakeout of a maturing industry where maybe people weren't the best at, at the business side uh, and, and really trying to make ends meet uh, is becoming more difficult. And so, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a rocky road right now. Yeah. So for Detroit, we know that they're giving out those licenses to equity applicants. What are those numbers looking like? And also, just in terms of how much of a battle is taken just to get to this point, where do you see it going? Yeah, about half of the licenses, again, are, are equity applicants. Uh, and that was why we designed it that way. We've seen around the country, if you do not uh, be intentional about including those who have been traditionally uh, frozen out of the industry, and especially those who have been traditionally those who have been on the uh, wrong side of the law, if you will, the failed war on drugs, uh, you find that, again, 2 to 3 percent. Uh, and we've seen now in the city of Detroit, because we did have a separate track for equity applicants, and they did not have to necessarily compete against those more well-funded uh, well uh, entities. We created two strains, and now we have, um, the, again, the numbers that we see today. And again, very, very, very strong numbers. We still have two more rounds of licensing uh, to go. Uh, and I look forward to uh, seeing the same results as we move forward. So James mentioned competing with these more better funded applicants out there, uh, the bigger players in the industry. You've done some reporting recently, Dustin, about some really unfavorable terms a lot of these dispensary owners or growers have been agreeing to. What's happening on that side of things? Right, and so that's a trend that we've seen sort of exist because if you have a private funder that is a wealthy billionaire, um, which typically tends to be white men in this country, which is why we've had an issue with equity, um, in that space, um, but those 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 loans tend to be the okay ones. It's when they're having to go through like maybe some banking, because um, traditional banks are not lending because it's still illegal federally. Um, so you're seeing sort of like almost like a private equity setup, some some mortgage lease buybacks. Um, so what's happening is these 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 terms are are outrageous. Um, uh, the most recent one was a company that took out a 3.6 million dollar loan with a 25 percent interest rate, which doesn't sound that insane, but when you sort of measure it out over the three years, uh, they had to pay $80,000 a month on this loan, and then they had a balloon payment at the end of that three years that was $3.8 million. So they ended up paying $6.5 million for a $3.5 million wow. loan in three years, which is, is pretty incredible. 
yeah. Do you feel like it's just going to take more time for people to just come to terms with the fact that this is a regular thing and that people are using it more for these purposes? Yeah, I mean, really what it's going to take is, is federal legalization for sort of the banking system to come on board. Um, the federal, uh, the feds have, have tried different, they've they tried legislation to sort of make banking easier. None of it really works. Until you can get Chase and, uh, you know, some of these larger banks to really start entering the business space that they're, we're going to just continue to see these insanely high interest rates, these really bad terms, which isn't good for anyone um, to succeed. It's very hard to succeed in this industry unless you have a bag man, right, unless you have someone really funding you. Um, and those people, especially when the market's not doing great, aren't really eager to lend out money. James, there have been programs to help people understand the process uh, of applying, of getting that license and, and getting into business. Is there anything going on or do you see anything down the line uh, to help the business owners avoid these kinds of unfavorable terms and unfortunate situations? Yeah, so one of the things that we added within our, or our ordinance is actually a Department of Marijuana Ventures. Uh, to have some of those tutorials and mentoring uh, for individuals who are seeking to get into this industry because as it's been mentioned, there are a lot of predatory deals that are out there. And we cannot, and I always say this, and tell those who are looking to get into this business, I cannot guarantee you success because this is a business. It is a highly regulated business. But what we want to do is provide you with an opportunity. And providing an opportunity means we provide you with uh, access to resources as best as possible, but information more than anything. Uh, and what we've seen is in this, at least in the first round of licensing that we have in the city of Detroit, especially our equity applicants, the great majority of them have come through that mentoring uh, course that we put together. And speaking in terms of the businesses, do you think some of these business owners are becoming more discouraged as they wait for things to kind of take off? You said they were doing good today, but that's not always the case throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, so when you just look around the country, it's, it's, it's becoming a challenge. Um, and in this area here, uh, we are, uh, trying to identify the best time, if you will, for us to open up the additional rounds of licensing. So that would take us to 100 uh, adult use retail um, uh, businesses in the city of Detroit. So yeah, they, they, there is some, uh, some angst, if you will, from some folks. There's some uh, people who are a, a bit antsy, ready to open up as well. But there are also a number of individuals who are not ready who are looking to open up. And we want to make sure again that before we open up another round that we're in the best position in the city of Detroit to uh, hopefully uh, have numbers that replicate those that we see today or maybe even better. We are several years into the legalization trend around the country. Uh, from your point of view, Dustin, is the gold rush or green rush, I guess, are, are we past that point? Is it a little too late? Like you said, you, you can't guarantee people are going to strike it rich if they get into this business. Are we past that point? It depends where you're talking. If you're talking Michigan, absolutely. I think the gold rush is over. Um, you know, it, it, but these companies that are existing here that are doing well here are also looking to other states. Mm -hmm. Um, so if another state, goes, let's say Indiana, goes legal, those companies will then jump over to the border and start trying to get licenses and trying to set up shop there and, and basically chase that gold rush there. Uh, and we'll see that occur in all the states until all 50 are legal. Yeah. Um, and so, but here, yeah, the market's just never going to be back to where it was $550 an ounce. Um, and people were making 75% margins. You know, those days are over. To compare, what is it now? 552, where are uh, we now? $86 an ounce. Wow. Okay. So, uh, really easy to pay your bills when you're making 550 an ounce. Um, 86, depending on how you built your company up, is very difficult. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's over. And what we're going to see is sort of a shakeout. And the companies that are very good at running a business and very good at either being a high volume player or having a really niche product that people want mm -hmm. are the ones that are going to survive. And I do think it's important to note that this happens in every industry that's new and that goes about. But, those industries say you, you can't get a car or whatever, you can find another another maker of a car. Here, we backslide, we're talking about illegal marijuana then becoming big, and sort of the dark side of that becoming a big thing again, and mm. no one wants that. We, we want to stay on the legal side sure. of this. Great part of the growing pains. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you.